It's a Tuesday evening and we are tapping into your mental space with me, Ntabi Sengwepe. Welcome to Healing Conversation right here on TBN Africa, your home for mental wealth. We know her as South Africa's darling and somewhere she made us feel at home, being on our screens every night on Generations. But we lost touch with her and much of what has happened in her recent life is leading us to this conversation today. She's become a beacon of hope and a light for every woman who's going through the most. My guest this evening, the phenomenal wonder that is Sophie Ndaba. She's agreed to have a sit down with me as we delve into all things mental health abuse. This is a conversation you want to stick around for. So Sophie, it's such a pleasure having you on Healing Conversations. What an honor to be here. I'm excited. Definitely going to share the most with us. Mm -hmm. It appears to me that people have already written you off. Mm. And um, your comeback, your recent um, comeback was labeled the comeback of the decade. <laughs> Not of the not of the week <laughs> of the decade. Um, let's speak about your journey, you know. And I want to start from you leaving generations because that's where many of us stopped really being in touch with who you are. Because for us, the viewers at home, we look at you on the screen and we feel we know you. Mm -hmm. So when you disappear from the screen, we don't know who, where you are. We don't know what's happening with you. So you emerge later. And this is not the Sophie that we know. Let's start there. Well, since I left Generations, it's really been what I called a new season, a new dispensation. Interestingly, when I left, I had already decided that after 21 years, I got to bow down. But you know, when home is home, comfort zone, you never know when to bow down until God forcefully removes you. And I believe it was by divine appointment that I was forcefully removed by God himself <laughs> in his own plots to say, mm. there's a journey that I'm taking you to, but are you ready for it? You know, this amazing God is a God that says that during that time where I took you from generations to where you are today, when you look at that little ball of what's inside this ball, you ask yourself, Hore, how many people would be strong enough to handle what God had in store for me that I had no idea about. Yeah, because it's been quite a journey. Yeah, I had no idea. Yeah. I had no idea. I mean, obviously, leaving my comfort zone for 21 years, that's the only home I knew. Mm -hmm. Yes, I did other things, but that was home. After doing other things, I'd say, ah, I'm going home, Monday, yeah. back to work, you know? Um, and then suddenly, you, luckily, I had my business to fall back on, you know, wedding planning, event planning, uh, which was the love of my life as well. So that was what I leaned on and cleaved on um, for a while uh, until God decided, okay, are you ready for it? And I said, I'm here for it without knowing what I was getting ready for. Mm. Yeah, which was obviously diabetes. Yeah. And um, it's that journey from an outside perspective. Yeah. Um, many of us, and I speak for South Africans, uh -huh. we are not aware that this is God calling you to your purpose. Absolutely. We are casting stones and we are being Twitter warriors. Mm. And you've had all sorts of things said yeah. about you. <laughs> yes. Um, you've been called HIV positive. Your obituary was written. Mm -hmm. And you're going through that. Yeah. What is happening to you physically, and what is happening to you in your mind? Sure. Remember, I had two challenges, and I don't think I was ready for either. Um, I had diabetes, which I thought was just diabetes. You know, when somebody says, in Peter, flu, Peter, flu. Mm. What more is there to flu? Mm. What more is there to diabetes? It's mm. a word, it's an illness. Yeah, maybe you have to eat differently, but you. And I also struggled a lot with my weight. So, you know, weight loss was like, yes, I'm here for it. Mm. You know, mm. I want to mm. lose weight. So, diabetes came. And, and, and adjusting to the new lifestyle came, and then came mental health. Mm. And then I was like, whoa. Is yeah, there you, a mental health side yeah, to this? Yeah, yeah. So you're also not aware that this is a mental health side to this. Mm. You're not aware that there's a challenge that's now knocking on your door. You're just thinking. So diabetes was never, to be honest, 
a, a challenge. Mm. There's a challenge maybe because I'm like, oh, I can't have my sweets anymore. Yeah. I can't have, I love ice cream. I can't have my ice cream anymore. But there's alternatives, sugar-free. Yeah. <laughs> you know, get out the cold drink. So I was like, I can't have cold drink anymore. Mm. The alternatives are there. And then, you know, obviously now the trick to this, which a lot of people don't know, is that diabetes with its best friend stress. Yeah. They don't work together. They, mm. they can never be best friends. You mm. must never even entertain the friendship mm. because they don't work well together. They, the other one distracts the other and disturbs and derails and just creates havoc. Mm. And really when my mental health was affected, so people thought diabetes created my mental health issues. No, stress created my mental health issues. Mm. They mm. must get it right. Yeah. Stress created my mental health issues and then it affected my sugar levels. Yeah. Now, it affected my sugar, which meant when it affects your sugar levels, it means now your sugar levels are uncontrolled. Mm. And when your sugar levels are uncontrolled, you start losing weight rapidly. Yeah, yeah. And the minute you lose it rapidly, you can't control it until your sugar levels are controlled. Stabilized, yeah. It doesn't matter what doctor you go to, my darling. It doesn't matter what medicine you take, as long as that medicine or that lifestyle of eating and exercising and whatever is required of you, you don't meet it. Mm. And your mental state is not in check. Mm. You can be eating well, exercising, drinking a mess on time, but your mental health is shooting up there. Mm. It's, it's not really going to help bring down the, the, that the thing, stress level. The stress yeah. levels that caused the, the sugar to go up. Mm -hmm. And now for you to now start losing weight, rapidly, mm -hmm. extremely rapid, which then turned me into what I look like. Mm -hmm. But I also was learning the disease. So I also didn't know the pros and cons. And once you're affected mentally, there's no time for, let me Google. Mm -hmm. There's no time, let me check. There's no, the doctor tells you, keep your sugar levels down, but you don't really get why are they so much on sugar levels down? Yeah, you yeah. don't get it. Because to them, it's like my priority as a doctor is to bring your sugar levels down, which means you are now going to be normal. You're going to have a normal weight and whatever. So the, 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 the totally here was the stress. Mm. Yes. Let's talk about the stress. You know, besides losing the comfort of a salary for 21 years, um, there were the marriage issues as well. Mm -hmm. Were those key to the stress levels that you found yourself in? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, mm. I, I think as women, we run away a lot. You know, that's why I say, you know, God allowed me to go through what I went through for a purpose. You know, without dabbling too much into exactly what could have happened. Mm. But mm. what I can tell you now, as a woman to another woman who's probably going through something, um, and you have, you're living with a dread disease or a whatever disease, um, you have to make a choice. Mm. And I stayed over two years worried about what people would think mm. if I walked away. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to be a laughing stock. Oh, what are people going to think? Oh, what are they going to say? And I worried for a lot, a lot of time over that. And whilst I was worrying, my situation was not getting any better. Yeah. And yeah. I was getting worse and worse and worse. And the minute I went deep into depression where I couldn't see myself, for who I was, mm. I, I saw, you see, it's me and you standing, yeah. sitting. Yeah. I was your size, right? Mm. So you can imagine you are my size, but you see you. Yes, your mental health, yeah. has, your, your psyche has not adjusted to who you are. You yeah. still see yourself as yeah. a healthy got, 38. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm. All you need is a belt, mm. and I can fit into it right now. You, you get what I'm trying to yeah. say? So as I'm standing in front of the mirror, hmm, this dress is like a little you, you tell yourself, but you see the bigger source. Mm. You see the old source. Yeah. You know, and that's where it became a problem. Because now a regular person would be fighting diabetes and saying, bring stress down, then you start gaining weight, then you become healthier. It means your sugar levels are controlled. So here I am stuck on the stress. Why am I stuck on the stress? Because now I'm in deep depression, mm. which means now I'm deep into it, which means I don't have this, the knowledge or the reality to fight. Mm, mm. So you, you represent now a lot of women who can say, I'm willing to fight for myself. I'm willing to choose. I like that. Uh, for myself. myself. Yeah. Yeah. Why did it take you 
you know, for, for, for someone who's going through the most, two years is a long time. Mm. Because you actually are dying every day. Mm. I've been in a marriage that, is, that was very abusive. Yeah. And I saw myself losing myself. Mm. You know, I saw myself sleeping with a firearm under the pillow. <laughs> night after night after night. Yeah. And yet when I took the decision to leave that marriage, I still went and committed and tried to commit suicide because I wanted that marriage so bad. Mm. Why are so many women now trying to hang on to what is killing because, them? Because they're so afraid of what people will think. What will my uncle say? Mm. What will my friends say? What will my colleagues say? I mean, I've got this man who gives me these lavish cars. And you find also there's a simple woman out there who just works eight to five job, her husband works eight to five job, or the husband is even unemployed maybe. Mm. And, 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 and she takes care of the family and she's a breadwinner, but she still loves the family unit. Yeah, right? the and, idea. Yes, mm. and Rona, women of God, we kind of say, but... Uh, 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 I cannot disappoint God yes. and, 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 and divorce. Mm. We are doing it again. Mm. It's like, you are Namzala, foot. Yeah. You know, I'm going into this. Come on, I should have seen this coming. Mm. Where were the red flags? They were there. They're always there. So, you know, I say to women who are going through something like that to say, I say run. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, I say run. You know, um, you're not negotiable. Mm. Like, you are. You, you, now I say to people who, who traumatize me in my space, I say I don't negotiate with terrorists because I'm so, I think I'm so sensitive that I'm so tired of being terrorized that I, I have no room or strength for it anymore. And for women who are still adjusting to understanding this terrorism they're living under, you need to say to yourself, okay, Gaibona terrorism. What do I say about me? How much do I love me? Mm. You know, say, what am I, so, you know, you start talking, having conversations with so Sophie, uh, how far are you willing to fight for me? Then Sophie answers you, as far as you want us to fight. Mm. And then you say, okay, let's start. Let's go. Let's fight. Mm. Let's mm. walk out of here. But it, it, it takes strategy. And I think as women, we use a lot of emotion when it's time to use strategy. Oh, yes. I say strategy, emotion, you bag it. When you've got your space, you cry it out. I mm. mean, there was a time I used to cry every day. Get on, Ryman. This thing you're crying, God, it's normal. And I would ask a friend, do you also cry? Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> I would cry about what? Um, did you know put it I cry softly. No, get but you know, anything in the galayo, I just see tears pouring down. I'm like, why, mm. Lord? And my cry is, why, Lord? And so you know what you forget is that God is enough, and and he's he's a he's a God of restoration. And he will never leave nor forsake you. So mm. when you are in that storm, he's in it with you. I mean, ask Misha, Kevin Abednego, ask yeah. those guys, yeah. man. And they were, they were in the fire of fires. And sometimes Lenyalo is like a fire ale, mm. where it's so deep that you think there is no way I can get out of this fire. Mm. Like you talking about your firearm. You believed there's no way the best thing is to just end my life. End your life for who? Mm. For somebody, that is where I for was. For somebody to bury you. Yeah. And then yeah. start over with Sophie. And you leave your kids. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So my kids were that thing that said, no. I never ever became suicidal, by the way. Mm. I was just in the depression mode. Mm. The minute friends prayed, the country prayed, people prayed out there, you know, that I'm thankful for, that they, you know, that people that don't even know me that prayed for me. And I think what they prayed for was for my sanity and my health. Mm. And some of them didn't even know that I was literally going mentally. And they prayed anyway, and God heard their prayer. Mm. And, and, and all God did was reactivate my mind to see. Mm. Oh, this is a kitten. Okay. Oh, this is how I look. Okay. I mean, I remember going to a psychologist and every time I walked in, I was weighing 42 kgs at the time. Mm. Now I'm weighing 70. And at the time, um, the Twitter walls were going, she's skeletal. Yeah. They, they were calling you um, the skeletal Sophie. Yeah. And um, some were saying she's a shadow of her former self. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And at that time, it was that thing, Yahore, okay. Uh, a friend of mine goes and pays for me to do to go see a psychologist and says, Get all but as you go. Mm. And I said, Okay, it was five minutes from my house. I drove there, dressed up, the usual Sophie, still seeing 
Sometimes I slip in and out of seeing the other one. Yeah. And then I come back and I don't see her and then I see her again. And I walked into the shrinks. I call it a shrink. A shrink's office. Are tell me your story. Mm. At that time, tell me your story. Every line had a teardrop. Yeah. You know, I couldn't finish any line. I couldn't finish any paragraph. I went there probably five to ten times. The guy was like, do you want to just write it? Mm. <laughs> because it was just too deep. Yeah. You know, yeah. it was yeah. just too deep that I could even write. And I trusted him. He was an old white man. And I trusted him. I said, oh, how long can I take them anyway? You won't read about them next yeah, week Sunday. Yeah, I won't read them about them next week Sunday. So I can tell him to the DT. But Ibile, I think when it's time to say that, that, that sentence, what happened? Mm. It, the emotion takes over because it's just too deep. It's it un, was just it's too It's unimaginable yeah. pain. Mm. You know that pain where you think to yourself, is it real? Mm. Unimaginable. You know that deep pain, you, you, you literally pinch yourself and you don't feel pain. That's how deep it was. Mm. And, and, and I ended up writing, you know, like a little essay. And then he read it and he kind of understood and he said, okay, we're going to take it part by part. I'm going to segment it. When you come back, we will now start talking about phase one, mm. you know, and, and, and then we go to phase two and then we'll start doing the solution. And then I stopped going. And then another friend of mine came and said, we need to pray. And then I said, okay, just during COVID, we were in Java. Mm. She said, let's pray to me. And there's an online pastor. We can pray six o'clock in the morning and six o'clock in the evening. And I said, really? I love my Jesus, so I was here for it, right? Mm, mm. And I said, okay, but I can't you know there's a risk in the middle of okay, ew. at six o'clock I'm not there. Yeah, I'm not make yeah. sure. <laughs> I'm there or I'm not there. Mm. So, you know, glory to God, I was there. Mm. You know, and I would get on and start praying and start saying, God, let's start by me stopping to cry first. Because yeah, I yeah. believe that you are here now to comfort me. You're the comfort of comforters, mm. right? And you, you said you'd never leave me in a forsake. So you're here now. So it means my situation and my ambience and my spirit is about to shift. Yes. You're creating a shift in my life. Yeah. And, and, and God did create that shift because the crying just stopped out of nowhere. Mm. And the, the crying was not about a death. There was a death inside of me. That was, yeah. The tear was about that. Mm. You know, the death inside of me, the death, the death in my confidence, the death in my spirit, the death in my situation mm. that I thought was so heavenly and fabulous and amazing and loving. And it was just dead. Mm. And, and that, that, that's where it was, I was mourning the death of the loss, that. The loss. The loss, the loss of yeah. everything around yes. me. And all I had was me. And I said, okay, Lord, it's just me and you. Let's, let's go. And, you know, and, you know, in that healing process or starting to heal process, I obviously got a stroke. And then it was that COVID time where it's like, oh, now I have to deal with the stroke. And my mm. son was obviously there to be the nurse as a boy child. You know, that's why I keep saying to people, um, be careful what you allow your children to see. Yeah, what you expose yeah. them what to. What you expose them yeah. to. I mean, he might look okay now, mm. but I'm extremely concerned. When I listen to his music, yes. I'm not talking about the hit song that yeah. made everybody yeah. go yes. crazy. Yes. Other music, mm. you know. You feel the pain I expressing hear, itself. Yes, I hear the lyrics uh, deep down in my pain because he raps. Mm. And you think, wow, this child is using music to heal yes. himself. You know, and some kids, let me tell you, don't have music to heal them. Mm. They're sitting rigid in one position and they don't have that sense of hope. And even when he raps, he raps a gospel and he says, me and my God and this and that. And I listen, I sit in my room and I listen to the lyrics as he's rehearsing. And I'm saying, yes, Lord, as long as he's got you in it. Yes. As long as he's got you in it, it means I, I don't have to worry as much as I would mm. about him. Mm. But is he healing? And if music is the healer, I'm, I'm, I'm for it. Mm, yeah. mm. You, you just spoke right there to someone who is staying in a marriage yeah. because of my kids. Yeah. We, it's a story we hear every day. Yeah. I must stay here because of my children. Uh, and um, we raise bitter young men. We raise um, young girls who grow up and think it's normal to be a punch bag because yeah. mommy was a punch yeah. bag. Yeah. And we raise um, young girls who don't know how to, you know, submit to a husband mm. or who don't even have the expectation that a husband mm. must, you know, submit to them because mm. this is a mutual journey that we are walking. But to them it's like, no, but it's normal. Fights are normal. 
if it's a normal we mm. agree arguments are normal we agree but there's a limit right there's 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 a love fight and a empty fight yes right a love fight and an empty fight mine mm. was empty yeah and 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 i knew that it was empty but i still stayed on and like i said my depression didn't help me deal with it sooner yeah maybe i would have dealt with it sooner if i wasn't depressed who knows mm. but you know it's history we wouldn't know we can't know yeah uh, you know i think another woman who's listening who is not yet depressed but she feels like i'm stuck yeah uh, and i'm uh, losing myself yeah like a run yeah but in yeah. your running be strategic mm. like mm. a run run because it's non negotiable your peace your 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 peace your joy your love for yourself and your children is, is not negotiable for mm. anybody no matter what they do for you mm. whether ba hopata la display hair style manala you know for you to go to these lovely tea parties listen if i if i needed to go back to back room ya go high i would have done it mm. if i had to go back go higher and sit go soweto and just that over i was ready for it mm. because i just felt like anything is better than a glass house yeah that yeah. is that is full of an evil ambiance mm. you know mm. and 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 i just felt like when i came out of it and i walked out in january that the day that i walked out i felt weight fall off mm. i felt weight fall off i went back to nothing mm. but i felt i'd already lost a lot i'd already lost my money i'd already lost my assets i'd already lost a lot mm. and here you had journalists talking and people talking and ranting and raving and it was like a thing of a conversation that you can have fun with and yes, i thought yes you don't even know the the fight I'm, so now i had a new fight i just come out of a fight mm. now i had a new fight of all the things that had fallen apart that i needed to restructure mm. so just when you walk out don't fool yourself to think it's going to be easy to start with push up yes yeah. yo hanka understand hore now you are running a fight that you're in control of mm. before you were in a fight that you were not in control of holistically now it's all on you good or bad yeah you're yeah. in control mm. yeah and now we speak on the losses that you suffered yeah you know you find yourself leaving the comfort and now you have to go back to your house yeah by then you still have the house yeah and um the cars are also going yeah one by one yeah and it's it's something that you know i buy my newspaper i find it there yeah you know and um to a certain extent oblivious of the fact that this is someone's yeah. pain this is someone's loss i mean if if we are talking about you and your house being taken most probably we are talking about not having food in your house <laughs> yes mm. yeah i mean when i went back to my house there was nothing no electricity no this no that no that i remember sitting on my couch and i thought hmm we're starting over reset and i'm here for it mm. listen i think the pain had come through <laughs> this pain of sitting on my carpet with no this no that yeah. no money in my bank account yeah. darling that was like the best gift god could have ever given me mm. let me tell you for another person it would have been like yo just have a joan yo you get phone nele this one and this one mm. to give me mm. Mm. i called no one i called on the lord yeah i said father you're a god of restoration mm. you're not men that you should lie You know, I used Jeremiah 29:11 to say yes. and I said I, I will seek you. Mm. Oh, and I'll find you. You know, you promised that you will restore me. So I'm going to seek you and my job was to seek the Lord. Mm. My job was to seek him, find him, and when I found him because the finding was relationship. Yeah, the re intimacy with him. Our problem, rata o bitsa ba ruti ba 10. Yeah. We like calling 10 pastor. Oh, eh cha me ntle le moruti wa hao. Cha you're not sitting with different pastors praying for you don't know which one is carrying a spirit which mm. one is not carrying a spirit and they are all abracadabra on you Ish. right i call it abracadabra because these pastors are abracadabra some of them except me uh, yeah except, except me. you yeah. but they are i've got experience so i can say it you know <laughs> yeah, yeah you know um uguti some of them are very good some yes. of them are men of god and I mean, some don't have the right intentions yeah you know mm. And, and 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 so i knew for i don't need abracadabra in my life all i need is to cleave unto the lord mm. so so i say to a lot of women when they say what do i do i'm not saying stay away from church yes. i'm not saying don't be a church member mm. but a membership i'm not saying all of that i'm saying have a 
personal, yes, intimate relationship with Christ. Go back to the book of Matthew. Mm. Know where your father was born, how he was born, how he was almost slaughtered by a king who felt this king cannot take over me yes. as a king, mm. right? And, 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 and how he was protected. Mm. And so in the same way, you know, uh, 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 you are also out of that war. And you must remember, Hore, God is here to protect you. Mm. God is here to take you to your promised land. God is here to say the giants will always even be. Mm. Our mm. problem is that we don't know that, we don't believe giants are in the promised land. Yes. We don't believe, Uguti, as we are circling this promised land, to say, mm. you know, we don't realize, we are giants of sin. You were never ready for because yeah. you are oblivious yeah. to the truth about life. Mm. Right? Mm. So, you, I mean, even Jesus himself, Son of God was, 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 was somebody went against him, somebody who he was around. Yeah. I mean, he's supposed to be, according to us, that abracadabra guy where, you know, everything is perfection around mm. him. Why is it that God allowed Uguti, his, the son himself, must go on the cross? Mm. Because he wanted to teach us, Uguti, when we represent the kingdom, we will also carry our own crosses. Yes. But are we ready to carry them? And many are not. Speaking to Sister Sophie, I'm learning that many of us compromise ourselves. And self-love is a journey that we need to go on. You know, loving yourself, putting yourself first, and realizing that in us standing up, tolerating many of the things which don't serve us, we are actually doing more harm to those who are around us. So this is a conversation that I'll be continuing with with Sophie Ndaba. Join us again next week right here on TBN Africa for a dose of healing conversations. To get yourself a copy of our latest books, The Mending of a Broken Vessel and Maintaining Your Joy, a journal for daily positive living, visit a bookstore near you.